begin, let us welcome our speaker. As I as mentioned, he does not really need much introduction. But I have to say that he's indeed an icon. <laughs> OK, there's a special request. Maybe all those seated on those periphery should come forward so that the photo session will come quite good. He mentioned, and if you were if given to Eastern and Southern Africa. Team research and relevance. A big, big hand. Thank you, everybody. You know, to others, I'm an icon. Others, I'm a troublemaker. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that's life. You know, when I was a young scientist in Ikada, one, one time, People who know who have been here long, Bellam, KB Singh called me because he didn't agree with me and told me, Said, I said, Yes, sir, I'm not here. He was acting program leader. I'm not here for popularity contests. I've got to do a job. Be careful. I might fire you. <laughs> so for me, ICRISAT has been part of me, and uh, I've been part of ICRISAT. And even when I was here, I never differentiated between internationally recruited staff or nationally recruited staff. I got on, I worked as a team. So my presentation today, I don't know why I decided to do it, but it's one of the spa of the moment to say, okay, let me do something. So that some of you have not gone into Eastern and Southern Africa and think that is somewhere far, and those in Eastern and Southern Africa who don't know what it is all about, is to give you a flavor of what we went through in order to build the team there, but also realize that sometimes when we are at the headquarters, we think that we are doing something for them there, which sometimes they resent because they think that they are part of a research and therefore we should work as a team. And uh, so my talk today is question of how did we come together as Eastern and Southern Africa, our research and relevance as part of the whole of a research. Now, what really spurred the development of ICRISAT in Eastern and Southern Africa? All of us who went through that cut in the mid-90s realized that the budget was very low, and uh, therefore we had to think of where is it that we need to do our work. People who are here in 2003 remember the recommendation that the headquarters should be moved and so on. We, we thought that at, at that age and this age where communication is so easy, how can we make sure that we reach our clients there without issues of constructing things and so on. And uh, when we had that cut, the region had gone through a system where we had country offices and each scientist was working on his own and struggling to look for money, and teamwork was no longer there. So a hub approach provided visibility and uh, making sure that our, our staff focused on re regional priorities and so on. And we had to realize also that although we are having regional or country public goods, but it should be tied to global public goods and uh, when we had two regions at that time, Eastern Africa and Southern Africa, and uh, 
still we thought that we could work together and that the overall thing is that the underlying and overall is that we should have greater efficiencies and so on. So those are some of the issues we did. Now we don't jump and start saying, hey, we want one region. But uh, there was a report by Ryan and Spencer, you remember that some of you were here. It was led by Cynthia, finding out where our priorities should be, what we should be doing. So we do looked at that. And then there was a conference which was targeting agricultural research for developing semi-arid tropics of sub-Saharan Africa, where partners were brought in, that were brought in, other centers were brought in to tease out what are the priorities. We had extensive dialogue with everybody in the region, in uh, Africa, and also within ICRISAT to look at what we should do. And uh, there was meeting of the minds, one, two, and three, and so on, where they're talking about uh, integration of the CGR before the CRP issues and so on came, of how can we work together. We look at that. And I said before that the EPMR report. And uh, nothing works if the boss is not committed. So uh, there was that commitment from Willie Da that we should look at regionalization as an option to see if we can work. After we had come together, looked at this thing, we had dialogues three or four times. We had meetings where we dialogued, we argued and so on, and uh, we developed an agenda. And on top of the agenda of what we should be doing, we also said, look here, we need to develop uh, a governing system. This was not from here. It was from down there, so it was bottom-up approach other than top-down approach. But we made sure that everybody was involved. So we said that for us to be successful in devolution of authority, we had to have uh, a regional coordination committee. And the regional Com coordination committee was cha chaired by the director of the region, which I was the chair, and then assistant director. And then each of the country offices were involved. And on top of that, at that time, we had three programs or four pro programs. So key scientists, senior scientists in the region, in each of the programs was represented to make sure that we had all these things coming together, buy-in and so on. And we, we had also directors of finance and uh, human resources and uh, DDG re uh, research as annex official. We said at that time, and still there is relevance, that regional com uh, had a, a regional coordination committee should have a function which looked at the determining resource needs. When we are talking of resource need, we are not talking here about funds. We are talking about what personnel, scientific personnel we needed. How much money do we need? And we also, to ensure that what we are doing in the region is part of ICRISAT, not part of the region per se. And then issues of risk management. For us to work together, we made sure that we had annual regional review meetings where the uh, global team leaders and now program directors are part of it. We made sure that we identified our resource mobilization strategy and we were the face of ACRISAT, therefore, in a number of fora meetings taking place in the region and co in, the, in the continent. Now, I've talked to you that what is our research? Is that <clears throat> the research which we're going to do in the region could have global implication as a global public good but is anchored on regional needs, uh, okay? And should, where we have comparative advantage, we should have partnership approach. The partnership should always be based internally first, that is all arms of equity. And for us, it, was, it is mostly with Asia, okay? Because that's where we have 
bigger, larger group who can help us in our area, and then partnership outwards. Who are the people outward? And as I said, if we had to have, and if we have to have relevance, we need to have ability to deliver. There should be improvement of efficiency, and at the end of the day, the impacts of our research. So all these things, as we go along, and each one of us, even here, think about that. What is the impact? What is science with a human face? Not only publications and so on, that's impact. But we are paid, eventually, to deliver to the resource poor farmer. <clears throat> I talked with global team leaders at that time, DDG research and so on, is that if we have to succeed, we should have effective teams with appropriate skill mix. And in our meetings, always we ask ourselves, hey, are we on the right path? Are we following our strategic plan, business plan, MTP? And now, are we anchored well to our four programs? Are we anchored in CRPs? All these things, we need self-correction, self-evaluation, looking at the way we move forward. So that's that. We said, look here, for us to have relevance, our, our research should be point of integration, like I said, of global research programs, uh, CGR research programs. And we should result in clear and measurable impacts. You know, all of us who have been here for some time will realize that when we had three programs in the 80s and 90s, each program worked in a silo. So in order for us to really be effective, we needed in the regions there for people to integrate. We are talking of IMOD. So we had to ensure that people work as a team, not only in working as a team. In development of uh, concept nodes, because donors want impacts, we want impacts. We needed to have people work across programs in the region, and we call upon other areas within the ECRISAT to help us there, but above all, look if there are alternative suppliers of what we have. And uh, our research, therefore, should be for raising visibility in the region and then obtaining feedback in our what we are doing so that we go back into the drawing board to improve what we are doing. Now, <clears throat> you know, I don't know why I draw these things. I remember in 2003, we had 20 years of SMEP program, sorghum and millet improvement program in Southern Africa. They had over $20 million, I think, for about 20 years. So that program just dropped. And everybody was here, I want this deal, because they were going to be got rid of. So all they thought about, how can I do this thing without looking at others? My idea is the only one that worked. And at the end of the day, what we want, wanted was that look at for areas of shared interest. And I kept on telling them, this, this is actually the thing I put in 2003 when I was uh, thinking of those things. You know, Ken Rai, you remember people like Dave Robert. You remember people like uh, Steve Twomlo and so on. These were powerful, strong guys who knew how to talk. And that group really, and I was thrown in and I said, wow, am I going to mine it? So I kept on sitting, drawing all these things. At one time, they said, Said, I don't even understand your English. I said, hey, I wrote my thesis in English, and it was one of the best, so I can speak English. <laughs> so anyway, so I said, let's look at what can we all gain from this? How can we make both our ideas work? And let's find way, ways to ensure alternative goals work. Let's think about all this all the time as we develop, we are here put 
ESA is going either to disintegrate or we are going to make it work. And actually, these are the people who are very difficult, but they have very great ideas. And ex excuse me my language, if you could cut through the shit, okay, and get to the core of these people, things really work because they are very sincere people, but it is that dismissing and so on. So I had to sit and listen, argue and so on. And really, teams started pulling together. And uh, that's the same thing I'm talking about. Now, at that time, Bulawayo was dead. So, Smith was dead. We had the Merim Gonja, Jeff Heinrich, uh, uh, Emmanuel Monio, and all these things, Dave Robak, who are on this project, who are going. So what are we going to do? Lilongwe had one regional person, uh, and it was a Malawian. We had to close. And Nairobi, we were three. Ade Freeman, Richard Jones, and myself. So here it is. We had to think all through all these things. And that's the number of staff we had. So I came back, I said, look here. Let's move some of this stuff, whether they were sorghum breeder, millet breeder, breeders are breeders. So we started looking at that. Then you started looking at where did we have a lot of problems. Zimbabwe nationally recruited staff were, go were going on strike at that time. I just taken over. So we started talking, really gave us a grace period. We started getting vehicles and so on. We started putting people in Lilongwe. So from that shaky period to now, we have 21 IRS. We have opened an office in Ethiopia. In Nairobi, we have about 12 IRS. And most of these people are coming from special projects because of that long haul ability to look at those things. We have had TL2 where we, phase one, I was fully involved to make sure that has relevance. Whole project, you know. So we had to do these things, but also realizing that, hey, we need other people. So we had, now we have now 25. I'm talking to my sister there to give me two more, or to give Moses Yambi two more. So I hope it works. She's convinced. OK? <laughs> and then Apple, associate professional officers, in most centers is not working, but we have had them throughout. And some of them ended up being scientists in the region and so on, or outside the region. We have the same one is the German one. We're having one. And actually, we have a senior fellow who is working as a same person, very good economist. And we are also looking at postdoctoral fellows and so on, where we, are, where we have to do that. And young scientists are employed as part of succession plan. See, the whole idea is that I've had two years of depression thinking of what am I going to do. You come at the airport, there's a driver here picking you. I took control of ground at 301 for the last three years. In Nairobi, police officers can't stop me because I have red number plate. And therefore, you are retiring. So what do you do? That's depressing you. But it is a process where you are going to die anyway. So all these things make sure that I made sure that we started putting in the issue of getting experienced, more mature people, young scientists to take over, but mentored by experienced people, and postdoctoral fellows and so on, so that we have that smooth turnover. And uh, so we did that. And uh, recently, we have recruited other staff. Now, you see, one of the things, and uh, Dr. Grando, you agree with me, that what they have been saying is that we are not visible. We are not visible. We are not visible. And we need communication. And communication is to raise your visibility that what you are doing has relevance. And if what you're doing has relevance and has got visibility, it means that you can have more resources. That's money. 
The third thing is that it will allow you to get even better people because they know that they are going to an institute that really delivers. So all these things are all tied together. So for me, I've looked at it that communication have failed. And I say so that we have not been very effective in the region about communication. We have been good at resource mobilization, but communication, we have not been very good. So, Lydia, please. Uh, that is, I'm saying, let's do something about communication. We are weak, we are not strong, we have not, have not been effective. Okay, so communication, we need to uh, do something about it. Number two is that this is what I've always said, that all scientists should look at communication as part of their work. And uh, in my humble request is that if everybody wants to take communication seriously, probably we need to include it in our work plans, that communication is part of your, what you're going to do. It should be down top approach, other than uh, being looked at, uh, looked for over the weekend by uh, my sister Lydia. So, Said, I want this thing with the, at the end of the day. I say, I have a family, Lydia. I say, but I've been told. <laughs> so, so we need to look at that. That everybody should take it seriously, okay? And uh, let's let's balance between very exciting thing and hyping, because hyping is like a balloon, blows on your face today, tomorrow, and so on. So let's look at something which is interesting. Something is sustainable, has got the truth, but uh, make it exciting so that somebody gets interested in it. And uh, to do that is very important. As I told you, funding to create teams of, this, of scientists around opportunities is very important. We need to have stronger links to strategic marketing and communication. Now, <clears throat> one thing which I've tried very hard in resource mobilization in the region and in RC and did not work is that we have never sat as a region or on the institute to say, hey, we have funding from HOP, it's going to pay for Gupta or a shock, and therefore that's fine. But here are the gaps of what we want to do, which we don't have funding, so that we target resource mobilization to where we have got gaps, other than all of us competing as we happen nowadays, and therefore 10 people spend a lot of money, I mean time, trying to put proposal together, and you take on the one. So let's think about the RC, should think about what are the gaps in the region, what are the gaps, so that we look for we use it for resource mobilization. Development of concept not then becomes inclusive. At the moment, sometimes we hear, oh, India, South, South thing, and uh, we have developed it in potential. Okay? For Africa. And people ask, I thought we are the people who know what is required, that we can work across. So when things like that come, please include others because buy-in and ownership are very important. I'm just giving you a nice example, not that it has happened, okay? So let's have those sort of things that buy-in, ownership, they are part of what needs to be da done. So let's own it. Let's have it. Let's have transparency. We had our hope meeting, and uh, your, one of you asked me, what is the budget for Asia? And I put it there. When people know what is expected of them and what is the funding, they, they can either be part of it or say, hey, we don't want it. So be it. So we need to be, think about that as an institute, OK? And as I said, there is argument now on uh, 
the, the innovation platform on uh, finance, okay, between U.S. and the group in Southern Africa. The U.S. people say that we are going to give you 30%, 20%, and uh, that they, are, they are going to maintain, uh, retain 75%. So the people come to me and say, what is this? I say, why are you talking about funding? Develop activities, develop uh, outputs, develop outcomes, and that will determine who will do what, so that then funding goes. Let's not put the let, let's not put the money before what can be done. And uh, our results, some of them need outcomes. Outcomes could be impacts and so on. So let's look at it so that at the end of the day we have got credibility. And uh, of recent, I'm part of RC. Letters are sent. Tell us how much you want. What equipment do you want? And so on. They do, we, they do not come to the region and say, hey, what do you think are the critical gaps? Who has special projects? And so on. So need, all these things need to be looked at. What is, you know, at one time there were three, two people in Bulawa, I mean Lilongwe. Somebody had two Prados. And I was wondering whether he was driving both or one and so on because nobody checked where, what they have, equipment and so on. So all these historical things, what is on the ground need to be looked at before resources are located and so on. And that's sometimes what makes us find that other people are spending only 20% because they have got uh, window three for activities. So discussions on that, honesty on that for all of us is very important. As I told you before, we always, in the region, and the issue should be the same, realize that we have four re three regions, and therefore, but anchored on four research programs. So let's have it. We have always looked at it that way. But we also realize that we are point of integration. <coughs> and uh, put on that uh, CRPs which we are involved in, and therefore, is not business as usual. We should always look at that. Whether in special project or whether we are whatever it is, let's make sure that we anchor in the final analysis is the CRPs that is driving the system. So we have always this is some of the things I've had discussions with, with the team in Nairobi that let's look at this. Let's make sure that whatever we do, don't start telling me something which is outside the system. So I just say that we have got three regions and four research programs, and then we have got CRPs, and I've said impacts occur in the region. Sciences work across research programs, and that's where we have partnerships beyond ICRISAT. And uh, nowadays, we all know that uh, funding opportunities is greater in Africa, but we in the region have taken it up on ourselves when I talk to my, the scientists in the region that look here. ESA is not ICRISAT. ESA is part of ICRISAT. And we are not going to have certain, th certain things that can be done at, in Asia. We should not try to duplicate when it's not efficient to do it. So let's agree on that. We have the gene bank. We have got the biotech systems here and so on. So they have got, we have more hands and so on. So let's look at that. Training is more efficient here because we have got housing, we have got more scientists, we have got support staff and so on. Let's look at that. So we cannot go uh, and so on. So for that to occur efficiently, the relevance of regional directors and the program directors and working as a team no consultation, discussions between the two to see what it is, and agreeing together of what should be move, moving forward, because consultation means subsidiarity. So we need that, and I've had discussions with my sisters there so many times about how we should run things and so on. I've had with CLLs and the likes and so on, so this is how we should do, be doing and so on. 
both human resource allocation and so on, so it should be taking place. <clears throat> and uh, we always talk about partnerships, partnerships. If you talk to the national programs, they think that ECRISA is really bad, and yet it's not true. So we need to have that strategic partnership. We have now to work through this uh, strategic partnership with, uh, between centers in CGR and outside the CGR through CRPs. And window three funding, that's where we have also a lot of partnerships. Greater involvement of national agricultural research systems and outside it within the countries is there. But we are going to realize that partnerships are not born, they are made. They require time, effort, resources, to develop and sustain. It is very easy to develop, but sustaining is, a, is the devil of its own. So when I look at this, if the institute is one, has got three regions, what does it mean? It means it has got headquarters. So headquarters is different from Asia. OK? So headquarters need to stand up. I say we are, we are the headquarters, and therefore, regular visits by HR and finance teams to know what's happening so that they understand the system and the research management group are RC also to visit at least twice to know what's happening. And I'm saying that for us, instead of auditors to come and penalizing us for not doing things right, uh, they should at least have a meeting also, just like we have it regularly. Strategic marketing and communication group to meet also regularly, because in the region we have got younger science, uh, people. We need to bring them, meet with them, go to the region and so on, so that they grow up, get us stories that make sense and so on. So they need to go there because they are really, they are like dressing nicely dressed and so on, you'll be noticed. And I thought that I end this by saying, this was when they are t telling me goodbye from Patanchero, mm -hmm. and today you're also <laughs> saying goodbye to me. So thank you very much. Thanks a lot. So thank you, Dr. Sayed Selim. So it's now open for some queries or maybe comments, and I think he has outlined a very good, very informative experience in management of research for development. And if you've been listening closely, he has outlined a few important points, like the importance of being able to work between and among programs. And then he added the importance of honesty. At the same time, he did mention the significance of communication. So within this, maybe now it's open for some comments or any additions or, I'm sure he doesn't mind if you say anything. This is his farewell presentation, so perhaps you can say a few comments or look at that picture. <laughs> <laughs> okay, anyone? I, yes, Dr. Rangara. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Salim, for sharing your experiences. Uh, you are one of the started physiology and uh, moved into breeding and uh, other disciplines, including entomologists uh, like me, uh, in your career. And one thing, uh, looking at Asia, you know, as a plant protection uh, person here, see what are your views? You know, because Asia is one of the spoiled uh, situation as far as plant protection is concerned. Okay, how you are looking at East Africa to prevent that situation because that is also now becoming commercialization, a lot of our culture is coming, a lot of exports are going on. And now yesterday you mentioned that PGNP also people spray two to three times to avoid insect pests. So how you look into that? Because we, we don't want this picture to go that side, quoting Asia is a, a spoiled example. The a few things. One is that 
when we had that cut in 1997, the things that suffered most were things crop protection, entomology, pathology, and we did not have we don't ha we didn't have any in the regions. The first step has been now for having pathologists in both Eastern and Southern Africa as one, and then West and Central Africa as another one. This, the second thing is now in West Africa, I think they have advertised for entomologists and got one. That would be another thing that is required. But uh, Ranga Rao, you have stayed in Equisat for over 25 years. You have got a wealth of experience in uh, biological control and all these things. We would want to see that thing either move directly with you working there or issues of communication, knowing what happens, the experience you have had, so that we use communication office and so on to start making sure that those things are used for, so that we don't repeat the mistake which you're talking about, because in some of the horticultural crops is starting to happen already. So spend some of your time there making sure that you develop, especially in legumes, because they are like very much by insects. Bella. I have two questions. One is, you look much younger than you were <laughs> those days. <laughs> What is the secret? <laughs> Second is more seriously. In your case, uh, you are the director and boss, and all disciplines, disciplinary scientists report to you. So they have to fall in line. Whereas in the Ikrisat Patancharu setup, we have different programs, cereals, legumes, agro ecosystems. Each one is having its own stream of uh, hierarchy. Uh, in the systems context, we need to be working on uh, integrating the sorghum, for example, with the groundnut or pigeon pea, more traditional system. And similarly, that we should go into uh, with the nest soils and uh, INM and IPM and all that. So it's more complex than I feel personally than what you are heading there. It's easy to achieve the kind of things you are talking about. But in a more complex system like Ikrisat Patanchiru, so do you uh, foresee any suggestions in that area? You see, historically, for this what you see is that I realized in 2000 that if you want to, be, you want to be younger, cut your beard. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, and uh, my kids told me that, and my wife, that they had never seen me without a beard, and I was going to cut it off. But they told me to stop here. Now, you see, we came from a, a different historical perspective. We came into being from the time when we had big projects, SMIP, the ground up, the African Development Bank, Fijian P project, into everything was stopping at the same time. And while we in Nairobi started working together, Ade, Richard, and I, in other places, they were pulling in different directions. So the experience we had in Nairobi, that we were now getting funding, others were not, and therefore we were in a strong position, was able to bring out the team. And uh, really, program directors need in Patanchero to work together to try to map out areas where a systems perspective should be working so that people don't remain in silos. Silos is the best place where people normally sit until they get the heat. That's when they start walking out of it and at that time it's late. We got the heat before we went into coming together. And therefore, we came from a low thing. And we are a smaller number. Let's not forget that. And you have got the headquarters here, and therefore, going. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying, but uh, you know. So that's that. So the, the issue of teams 
it's very important to look at what you really want to do. Uh, I think Stefan has uh. Well, I, I would like to follow up on that comment, actually. And uh, now we should not say ICRISAT Patanchero and ICRISAT mm. Africa. I mean, we have one system within yeah. ICRISAT. Uh, we, are four, we have four research programs that go across the regions. So it's, and uh, I don't believe that we should blame the system uh, for not working together. I mean, to me, it's more uh, having the attitude uh, mm -hmm. of uh, really getting together. I mean, the scientists uh, in, uh, in Africa, whether it's uh, Western Central Africa or Eastern Southern Africa, they all report uh, to the, I mean, for research, uh, to the research program directors that are sitting here in Patanchero. But, I mean, they are ICRISAT. So uh, they get together. They were definitely, I mean, the regional directors are extremely important in, the, in catalyzing uh, all that work. But at the end, uh, it's, uh, our people were really making a team. So it's, I don't really would blame the setup of the institution. No. It's, uh, it's more, I think, is a mental type of uh, attitude. Any, any During this period, um, the last 20 years, or currently, is there a formalized effort to build talent in the areas of plant breeding, in areas of agronomy, extension, where um, high school kids are not going into those areas. You're talking about postdocs, PhD, young scientists, but at the younger level, is there a formalized effort that ICRISAT is involved in at the regional level? She is the head of training. <laughs> I mean, she's the one in training. She could help us with that. No, in fact, um, I wanted to ask a question as well, where it might sound cliche, but we always look at the young minds as the pillars of the future. And the question before I'll get to Shoba is, the question I have is, uh, if I look at the ratio of students coming to headquarters, uh, in terms of the advice and supervisor of students and other scholars and interns, Africa is really, really low. But I have to say, of course, it has improved since I sat down from 1998 because of like scholarships like C.V. Raman, so where we get African students coming. So I don't know in what, in what ways can we sort of like increase this kind of, you know, uh, entry of more Africans within African locations and not just here at Patancheru. Going back to the point made by Shoba, um, in terms of, you know, there's really no formal uh, opportunities for high schoolers except for Bolo Foundation, where it is the fourth time that we've been hosting them. But we do encourage, on special cases, we've been accepting high schools high schoolers from universities and from other partners if there's a request. But I have to say we've just been going through the university degree, MSc, PhD, and fellowship. Those are the only ones. Yeah. Your question. Yeah. yeah. You know, I take Ranga Rao, take Lydia, Ken Rai, Bellam, who else? We all have the experience that up to 1990s, we had in-house training program with its own budget, where a large number of students, three quarters were from Africa. The ones that did not speak English, they came here three months earlier the, to, to move from French to English. Oh, Mohan, you also mm -hmm. there. Yeah, so probably the program directors who are holders of funding need to put now money aside to make sure that those trainings are strengthened. I've always resisted the training 
to be done in the locations or regions because we do not have accommodation like we have here. We do not have facilities like we have here. We, Equisat was like, here was like a melting pot where you have people from all parts of Africa and Asia coming together. And a lot of them became future leaders in Africa now looking at agriculture. So probably, as I said, you ignore me as I'm senile, and that's fine with me, or it's going. Or just put it together so that you, you move it forward, because I'm talking from my heart. So we need to look at that sort of thing. We had three training officers, scientists, yeah, at that time. Yes, Lydia. That, yeah. Thanks for your kind comments. Do you have any thinking in your wish list to improve communication with people? <laughs> I think, first of all, in my humble opinion and in my naivety, I say that really communication should be global. Look at yourselves as global. Make sure that uh, for program directors that you probably look at iPad and put as work, part of the work plan is what can you communicate this year. It could be a scientific paper, interesting stories, and so on, so that somebody puts it there. And thirdly, since most of the work is the big shots are here in communication, that you visit regions to understand what's happening. For God's sake, don't say that I'm coming now. Ask the regions what is the best time because you want to tie it with uh, the best time of the crop or some big conferences. And uh, work with them. Work with RCMG, work with scientists and so on so that we make sure that we have that problem. Uh, Dr. Grando was in Nairobi with uh, Yilma and Yilma was really communicate. I mean, moaning, complaining that really, if you do a hit, all you get is maize, rice, wheat, and now orange flesh potatoes, cassava. I have to struggle to get anything, mm. be it on an Ikrisat website or outside there about sorghum millets. So let's admit it and see how best. Let's not hype. Anybody else? Yeah, no. Thank you for that uh, very stimulating and uh, informative talk. And, uh, uh, you, quite early on, you, you um, touched on something that's sort of worrying me at the moment, and I'd like to ask you to elaborate on that. Uh, you said that uh, our resources should be allocated where there are outcomes, and we're also considering, you know, ways of management that are based on based on outcomes. But it seems to me that outcomes are something that happen after the activity. So how do you how do you square that? How do you um, how, how do you match the, the the potential for outcome with uh, the resource allocation that you think is going to be most effective? I don't know where I put it. I said activities, outputs, and outcomes. And this will depend on what is the most important. When we developed phase one of the HOPE project, their emphasis was on deliverables. So it, it depends on where we are. Is it on outcomes or impacts? Or is it on high-end science? So it depends on where we are. That's why I say activities, outputs, and outcomes. I mentioned the three together. And it really is dependent on the, where we are on that chain. There's no one size fit all. Just to add to the issue of capacity building, uh, 
I, I, I'm sure almost everyone is quite familiar now that DG has approved around 14 uh, capacity building activities coming from various groups and commodities and disciplines. So I think it's a very good start for, you know, some kind of, you know, collaboration between and among programs. And of course with our partners as well. So <coughs> just a reminder also for the rest, maybe for those who have not submitted the, the time frame that will be there. I, I will submit it, the input on that so that I can talk about program as well. Thank you. So if there are no other comments, let's give a big, big hand. Then they came to me afterwards. So I'll be in Adi. For probably one, two or three years. 